In this video, we are going to deal with some facts and figures, which are very important. You'd be curious to know what I'm talking about. It's about the land, the land on which we live. And we call it our country, India. India has an area of 3.28 million square kilometers. Isn't it very big? But it is only 2.4% of the total geographical area of the world. This seems a very small percentage. But compared to other countries of the world, it is very large. Although smaller than Russia, Canada, USA, China, Brazil and Australia in that order. It means that it is the seventh largest country in the world. So children, let us end today's class here. We'll see you in the next video. Do subscribe to my channel and get notifications about upcoming videos. Thank you everyone. Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to learn about India's location. It means where India is located on the world map. Do you have any idea? Yes, it is located somewhere here in the northern and eastern hemisphere. But where exactly in the northern and eastern hemisphere? To know the exact location, you need to find out the latitude and longitude which are touching the easternmost, westernmost, northernmost and southernmost points of our country. So let us have a look at the latitudinal and longitudinal extent of our country. The value of the latitude which is touching the southernmost point of our country is 8 degrees 4 minutes north and the northernmost latitude is 37 degrees 6 minutes north. Now come to the longitudinal extent. The longitude which is touching the westernmost point of our country is 68 degrees 7 minutes east. Whereas the longitude that is touching the easternmost part of our country is 97 degrees 25 minutes east. Now let us know about one more important latitude which is dividing India into two equal halves. The name of this latitude is Tropic of Cancer and its value is 23 degrees 30 minutes north. Do you know there are 8 states through which the Tropic of Cancer passes? These are Gujarat, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, West Bengal, Tripura and Mizoram. So children, let us end today's class here. We'll see you in the next video. Do subscribe to my channel and get notifications about upcoming videos. Thank you everyone. Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to tell you something very interesting and important, which all Indians must know. Excited to hear? Do you know India has one standard time for the whole country? But why? Why is it important to have a standard time for the whole country? Let me tell you. The first and the most important thing you need to know is that the local time of a place depends on the longitude which passes through it. So let us find out the longitudes which pass through India and how do they affect the time of the country. As you have studied in my previous video that the India's longitudinal extent is 68 degrees 7 minutes east to 97 degrees 25 minutes east. When you will calculate, you will find that there is a difference of approximately 30 degrees between these two longitudes. Any idea how much time the sun will take to reach from easternmost longitude to the westernmost longitude? 
let me explain you in an easy way we all know that the sun is a static body whereas earth rotates and it takes 24 hours to complete one rotation therefore it will take 1 hour to complete the rotation of 15 degrees now you can easily calculate how much time the earth will take to complete the rotation of 30 degrees yes you are right 2 hours thus you can say that there will be a difference of 2 hours from gujarat to arunachal pradesh This is the reason that the sun rises 2 hours earlier in Arunachal Pradesh than in Gujarat and this creates a time difference. Let us understand it like this. If you are staying in Gujarat and your best friend is in Arunachal Pradesh, then you both will have different times on your watches. Or When your watch shows 4 p.m. at the same time your friend's watch will show 2 p.m. Wouldn't it be very confusing for both of you to schedule a meeting? There will be a number of problems. If we follow the different local times for different parts of our country. Then what solution do you have? What if we have one standard time? for the whole country great idea isn't it so to avoid a lot of confusion which would have been there by following different local times we have selected one standard time meridian for the whole country it is called the indian standard time meridian and its value is 82 degrees 30 minutes east you can see it passes through the middle of the country It has helped to avoid a lot of confusion which would have been there by following different local times or in absence of a uniform time. Hope this is clear to you. So children, let us end today's class here. We'll see you in the next video. Do subscribe to my channel and get notifications about upcoming videos. Thank you everyone. India has an area of 3.28 million square kilometers. You will be amazed to know that the length of the land boundary of India is about 15200 kilometers and the total length of the coastline of the mainland including Andaman and Nicobar and Lakshadweep is 7516 kilometers there is a question popping in my head how many kilometers i'll have to travel if i want to reach kanyakumari from jammu and kashmir i can give you a hint the distance between the northern and the southernmost point of our country is 3214 kilometers but the roads are not straight and therefore you will have to cover a distance of more than 3214 kilometers and if we want to move from the easternmost point that is arunachal pradesh to the westernmost point which is gujarat then we will have to travel more than 2933 kilometers as the distance between these two points is 2933 kilometers so children let us end today's class here we'll see you in the next video do subscribe to my channel and get notifications about upcoming videos thank you everyone hello everyone hope you are staying safe and healthy with your family and friends you must have heard of the saying a friend in need is a friend indeed nice saying isn't it and if we go by that then my best friends would be my neighbors why 
because they are the ones who always step in first to help me in my time of need and i do the same for them a little conflict is natural but they are an important part of my life just like india's neighbors do you want to know about them india shares its border with seven countries namely pakistan afghanistan china bhutan myanmar nepal and bangladesh all these countries share land boundaries with india from different sides for example pakistan and afghanistan they are in the northwest of our country pakistan shares a land boundary with three indian states and one ut they are gujarat rajasthan punjab and jammu and kashmir let us know about the countries which share land boundaries with india in the north they are china nepal and bhutan china shares a land boundary with four indian states and one ut they are arunachal pradesh sikkim uttarakhand himachal pradesh and ladakh and there are five indian states which share land boundaries with nepal they are uttarakhand uttar pradesh bihar west bengal and sikkim next is bhutan which shares the border with the indian states of assam arunachal pradesh west bengal and sikkim now we will know about eastern neighbors they are bangladesh and myanmar assam west bengal mizoram meghalaya and tripura share borders with bangladesh whereas arunachal pradesh nagaland manipur and mizoram share an international boundary with myanmar so children now you are very well familiar with all the states of india which share boundaries with neighboring countries now let us collect more information about india's other neighbors namely sri lanka and maldives they are located in the south of india they are india's island neighbors sri lanka is separated from india by a narrow channel of sea formed by the park strait and the gulf of mannar while maldives island is situated to the south of lakshadweep island do you know india is called a peninsular country but why because it is surrounded by water bodies from three sides can you name them yes you are right arabian sea is in the southwest the bay of bengal in the southeast and the indian ocean in the south we also have two groups of islands andaman and nicobar islands and the lakshadweep islands in the bay of bengal and the arabian sea respectively so children let us end today's class here we'll see you in the next video do subscribe to my channel and get notifications about upcoming videos thank you everyone